exposes system.event handler events in the Unity editor. This makes it easy for level designers to make use of these events, responding to them with actions like playing audio or particle systems, enabling and disabling game objects, and sending messages to other components. In this sample, we will run through the process of responding to an event. First, let's take a look at the code that's sending the event. Here we have a simple sample event sender called event sender1. As per the description, it sends a tick event for five seconds, one per second, and then sends a boom event. We will notice that these events are defined using the system event handler pattern. There are other event patterns used in C-sharp, but this is the most common and typically used throughout the C-sharp world. The tool does not support other event patterns. So let's have a look at this in the editor. Firstly, let's create a game object and attach this sample script called event sender one. Now let's create another game object that will respond on the responder we drag the event responder script. We can then drag the game object that we want to listen to, in this case sender. When we do that, we'll get a list of all the components available on the object. For example, if we select the transform component, we see that there's no events found. Selecting event sender one shows us two events, the boom and the tick. Let's respond to the tick event. We'll add an action. And for now, let's just debug log the output. Hit play. And we should see every second that we're getting a tick argument. Five, four, three, two. Let's attach that to a particle system. First, let's create a particle system. We'll adapt the settings slightly. So if we simulate this particle system, see that it fires off a single slow moving particle. If we go back to our event responder, we can change the action type. Let's change it to play particles. And then drag our particle system to the box. If we now hit play, We'll see that every second we get a particle spawned. And once the ticks stop, there are no more particles. So we can add additional events. There's quite a range. We can send messages, play sounds, activate and deactivate game objects, and so on and so forth. So this allows you, as a level designer, to quickly respond and hook up C sharp events in your Unity scene. Let's open the sample. So this is very similar to the example we went through before. We have a responder listening to the boom event, which will play some particles, and a responder listening to the tick event, which will play some particles. We have a filter on that at the moment. Let's delete that filter for now and hit play and see what happens. So we have a flash for each tick, and then when we get the boom event, we play an explosion. 
Now this filter capability allows us to listen to only specific events which contain a certain piece of information. It's up to your coder to define the filter. Here I've defined a simple filter which allows you to put in the number of the tick you're interested in listening to. So if I place three in the list and hit play, you will no longer see multiple flashes, but instead, after three seconds, we will see one flash, and then the boom. To implement these, there's a simple iFilterable interface. It takes in a string, which is the filter, and returns true or false depending on whether the event arguments match the filter. You could make this as complex as you like, even using a simple grammar or a complex grammar. Let's have a look at what the tick event args code looks like. So this event argument extends the system event arguments and implements the iFilterable interface. And in order to do that, it implements the apply filter method. Here we simply take in the filter, parse it to an integer, and check if it matches the value of the tick which is part of the tick event. So that's a summary of events exposed. I hope you find it useful.